Hi, Mr. President, Vit Yelichka. Uh, we're going to ask you some questions today, and to compile these questions, we reached out to the members of our party and asked them what they would ask you if they had the opportunity. So the first question we have here is, when you began this project, uh, did you believe it to be a, a genuine possibility and solution, or was it initially just an avenue for you to proliferate and promote your political ideology? We always knew there will be this possibility that the state will be created, and we knew it actually for sure because the international law says so. You have Terra Nullius, you go there, you declare the country, and that's it. That's how the world runs, and it always runs like that. And we knew, of course, that there will be some difficulties on the way, but it will be no game if there were no difficulties, of course. What do you feel is uh, your, your most notable victory so far and, and the biggest accomplishment for Liberland? Well, having 330,000 people who pre-registered for the citizenship is a great victory and I can almost tell you that the project is over with all this support from all around the world. We know that there is no way to stop that. You know, if we accepted everybody, we would be larger than Iceland. And we have 33, 35,000 people who are absolutely serious about it, who filled in even their CVs. Uh, for the registration and that's a group of people who also this is larger than Liechtenstein for example by now and no matter if we can access the land or not you know this, this is still a huge nation of people who are like-minded who really believe that state should only uh, ask for voluntary taxation and who believe in limited government. A question in addition to that does Lieberland permit dual citizenship. We have no problem with that and it's uh, very funny when some people consider you know having just liberal citizenship if their country doesn't allow for dual citizenship uh, then they consider having just liberal citizenship and they want uh, to be deported uh, to liberal when they lose their citizenship of their country of origin. After receiving a large amount of international publicity and attention, do you feel that mainstream media is, is once more open to the ideas of classical liberalism? Definitely. And there is this thing that the thing itself is popular, like declaring a country and, and really doing it properly, which really ha didn't happen for 120 years now. And also ideas of liberty are very popular within some circles, even in the mainstream media, but they didn't have a means to... So, so, so show, show it to the world and we are giving this great opportunity to like-minded journalists and people from all around the world now to support this project and they took it seriously and they are helping us and they also have a lot of fun with it you know the first citizen of Liberland was actually a, a newspaper man from USA Today. Now uh, you've discussed a little the uh, conflict with Croatia's law enforcement, um, but but what have been the general reactions of the citizens in your neighboring countries? The reactions were incredibly positive. We had a mm, incredible support from us, both Serbia and Croatia. When I now go to Osijek, which is the biggest city nearby Liberland from Croatia side, you know. The, the kids run to me and they want to take picture with me. I, I don't think that would happen with the regular member of uh, Croatia Parliament. And uh, when I uh, went there for the first week uh, to Serbia, you know, the uh, deputy uh, mayor of Sorbon, which is the largest city on the Serbia side, came to us with four bottles of wine and he said, this is a great thing you are doing. And, you know, Sorbon, the city actually has... Liberland originally on its catastrophe map, so we have a we have a really good support for the project from the original owners of the land, which I think is great. There is a clear history of conflict in your nation's region of the world. Uh, how would you gauge the likelihood, and how do you address the possibility of an international hostile takeover? I think it's absolutely uh, impossible. It's absolute something which is. You know, either Croatia or Serbia could not sell it to the world that they are militarily invading this country. With all this uh, positive publicity, you know, they, they, you know, one country is member of the European, the other country asks for it. That that means that they sort of have to follow some sort of, sort of cultural um, standard. Plus, you know, there is this popularity among the citizens of both Croatia and Serbia, which makes it absolutely impossible for them to do something like that. And, you know, the great thing about this project is no matter how people attack us or, or whatever they do, they always help us. You know, 
any sort of attack, no matter how it is planned or how it is done, would be still supporting the project. So uh, I uh, consider this possibility uh, very close to zero. How do you envision trade and travel when crossing the border uh, with electricity, water, and other goods and commodities uh, without the fear or with the current fear of being apprehended in doing so? First of all, we need to be able to access the land freely and not like now that uh, our scouts sort of go there at night and they plant the flag there and they go back again at night and because they, they, they are not able, the police is not able to catch them. And uh, I think that can materialize pretty soon when we uh, gather this large support by the people who want to have fun, who will be based in Serbia and as well as in Croatia, who will go there with boats, with flyboards, with uh, all sorts of fun equipment to go for a party. And they will go there every single week to invite the police guys for the party. And uh, that way we will create a, a real group of people real citizens who will be on the spot, able to be ready to move there any time when the Croatia police allows them to do that. And I think, you know, maybe when there are 400, 500 people, that might be already the threshold for the police. This is this will be a group that they would not be able to arrest and they will just go with the flow, you know. They will receive the flowers, receive the beer, and they will go with them to the party, with our citizens to, to the party in Liberland. And I think it's, it's, a, it's not too far away, actually. Uh, there's a large support for this endeavor from individuals, and, and we've discussed, obviously, the, the obstacles, or you've discussed the obstacles um, posed by foreign and international government entities. Uh, but have you received any official support from the private sector, large corporations, small businesses, etc.? Actually, like a week after uh, Liberland was created, uh, we got a phone call from Budweiser that they want to be official brewery of Liberland and we were donated a number of, of beers for the first party and uh, there are so many unresolved emails with so many backers from the corporate from the corporate uh, area uh, that uh, it's almost impossible to count uh, and uh, Flyboard company now supports us. You know, it's very popular for these companies to take part on that because there is no, almost no other place in Earth which could have better media coverage. Mm -hmm. So it's really worth it, you know, to uh, support us with something and then have your logo covered by 20 media and agencies which are interested in the project. Where do you see Liberland's progress one year from now, and where do you see it five years from now? I think one year from now we would be already able to start some serious construction works there. Uh, after the winter, I think we will be ready to, to do whatever it takes to, to really start some pontons there, maybe rebuild that house that, that is there. Uh, the only house that we have there, it will be probably the only governmental building in the in the country. Mm -hmm. And five years from now, I, I, th I think we might be able to have similar uh, city like we are used to from Monaco or something, you know, because, you know, whenever you let people to do their business and let, let them freely develop the land, you almost always see the miracle, you know. You should see how Hong Kong looked 20 years ago, how Dubai looked 20 years ago. And yes, we have people who build Dubai in support of this project. They were also They also contacted us and said, this is a great idea, let's do it.